Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flicks on Dobbs. Wait a minute, Dobbs? Have I ever acted to him before? Well, I may have. I just don't remember. Anyway, today we're going to be checking out the 15 hilarious softlocks in Pokemon. <laughs> Let's see what these are and see how we can laugh. Ha! I am victorious again! Oh, there's, there's an item behind you. Oh nice, a potion! Oh come on, my battery's died. Oh, okay, one sec. Oh no. There we go. Oh, what the? Move! No! No, I can't be trapped! What about my shiny farce dicks? No! No! Damn it, you don't have cut. Oh. What is going on, guys? This is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, I'm gonna go over 15 hilarious soft flocks in Pokemon. But before we huh. start, I just wanna give a shout out to Guardian Tales. What's with the shiny gibble? Probably something little. Sponsoring this video. Yeah, Mini Dobbs here, and Guardian Tales is an awesome adventure role. We're gonna cut, and we're back. Let's go. All right, let's start with the simple yet hilarious software that can take place in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And it happens to evolve two shiny Pokemon. Oh. You see, in these games, there are five characters known as stat trainers, and each of them specialize in a Pokemon that excel in a certain stat. And during the game, each of these characters will join the player's team for a short side mission, with the characters being Cheryl in Eterna Forest, Riley on Iron Island, Buck on Stark Mountain, Mira in Wayward Cave, and Marley on Victory Road. Well, well, and during well. these side missions, all of the characters are able to encounter wild Pokemon with the player, initiating a double battle. And yes, that of course includes shiny Pokemon if the player gets lucky enough. Damn. But this is where the soft flood comes into play, because if the player gets lucky and encounters one shiny Pokemon, they'll be okay. But if they get too lucky and encounter two shiny Pokemon in this double battle while traveling with the stat trainer, oh, 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 damn it. And the two shiny Pokemon happen to be the same species, the game will freeze and ultimately soft flood, oh. rendering the game unplayable until the player resets the game or by chucking their DS across the room and breaking it and then start punching their pillow, which what I would probably do. Dude, that is terrible. You get double shinies of the same mon and the game just like, nah, y'all not gonna get this luck and just stops. Oh my god, that would be infuriating. But either way, the game is locked. And to calculate the odds of this happening, assuming the player doesn't have a shiny charm, it would be a 1 in 67 million chance of encountering two shiny Pokemon in one of these locations. And both Pokemon being the same species just make this astronomical, which is just hilarious. Oh my god. Number two. Now, if the last softlock wasn't rage inducing, this one definitely is. And shout out to Pika Spray for popularizing this softlock because it truly is a unique one. Now, if you didn't know, the Elite Four member Lorelei has an AI known as Smart AI, which in Generation 1 means oh. the opponent will always go for super effective moves. And when I say it always goes for super effective moves, I mean this quite literally. Because even if the move does no damage or make no sense to use in the situation, the Smart AI will still use it. So if you had a move like Haze, an Ice type move that doesn't do any damage, a Smart AI will always use that move on a Flying type Pokemon if it has no other quote unquote super effective moves. Because hmm. the Smart AI is pretty dumb AI. <laughs> so now that you know how smart AI works, let's get into the soft lock. All you have to do is capture a Mankey, evolve it, teach it Rage, and then use up all of his other moves PP. And then after that, enter the Pokemon League with no items, and then finally save the game in Lorelei's room. And voila, oh my God. we're now forever stuck in this room forever. FOREVER! Because when you battle Lorelei, she will only use rest on your Primeape, since that is her only super effective move. And because of the way Rage works in Generation 1, your Primate will rage indefinitely until either a Pokemon faints or the battle ends. And since opponents have infinite PP in these games, and Lorelei is constantly spamming rest, this battle will go on forever. FOREVER! Oh my god, that is terrible! Why? At that point, that's when you just straight up reset the game, never touch it again. Even if you reset the game, you will still be stuck in Lorelai's room, so there is no escape. So your options are is to be stuck in the battle forever, forever! or the room forever. Forever? Yes, yeah, Squidward. My God. Forever. It's your choice, which makes the soft flock hilarious. <laughs> Now, imagine this. You live in Japan, and you pick up the new Pokemon Diamond and Pearl games day one, Ooh. and they get to the Pokemon League within a few days. And before you're about to beat the game, your friend says he wants to battle you before you officially take on the Elite Four. So you accept their challenge, and then go up the Pokemon Center's escalator, and then save the game and battle your friend. And once you're done kicking his butt, and you're ready to take on the Elite Four, finally, you realize that the escalator doesn't work. It doesn't let you back down. It doesn't even let you interact huh. with it at all. Well, that's because you're now probably softlocked due to a catastrophic oversight. 
Yeah, oh. so it turns out in the very early Japanese versions of Diamond and Pearl, probably the day one editions, a bug in the game caused the escalator at the Pokemon League to not work properly. It made it where the escalator would only go up, but not down, essentially making it a oh, one-way no. trip to a prison cell. And since you're required to save the game for doing online activities, it's very likely that you save the game inside this new reality. And no, even though you have access to trading, you couldn't have a friend sent over a Pokemon with teleport because it just wouldn't work in the Pokemon League. Really, your only option to escape was either use a cheating device or send your game directly to Nintendo. And that's it. And oh I doubt any cheating devices were up to date, so your only option was to wait a few weeks for Nintendo to send it back. And yeah, it was that simple. Simply going up an escalator and saving the game would completely soft lock you, which is just hilarious. Oh my god, that is terrible to encounter. We'll back. Now, we've all seen the famous Metapod ah. versus Metapod battle, but have you ever heard of the Wobbuffet versus Wobbuffet? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Metapod use Harden. Metapod use Harden infinitely. Oh, wait, Wobbuffet versus Wobbuffet using Council? Huh. Battle? Because in the Hoenn games, these two Pokemon can quite literally start an infinite battle, and all it takes is the item's leftovers. I'm not even oh. kidding. Because before Generation 4, Struggle would recoil the Pokemon based on their damage dealt when struggling, not based on their HP. And since Wobbuffet is a reactionary Pokemon only known moves like Counter and Mirror Coat, it's only natural for its attack stat to be abysmal. And it's so abysmal in fact that its recoil damage can be out healed by leftovers, allowing it to go infinite. So essentially, oh if you did a Wi-Fi battle with your friend and went at it with Wobbuffet, the battle would go on forever, ultimately softlocking you until one of you reset the game. And no, even if you brought additional Pokemon to the battle, it wouldn't matter. Since Wobbuffet has the ability Shadow Tag, which prevents all Pokemon from escaping. So oh if you God. want to know how to torture a Wobbuffet, just have them look at each other. Because they'll be stuck like that forever. forever. Enough of that. Oh my god in heaven, Next up, torture. we have another funny softlock in Diamond and Pearl. And this one involves a Starly you face in the very beginning of the game. Now, normally this battle is scripted. The Starly is programmed to flee the battle if the player's Pokemon drops under 20% HP. But if the conditions are just right, the Starly can actually knock out the player's starter Pokemon and inevitably softlock the game. Because the game just can't comprehend how bad the player is to lose it to the scrub Starly. So, moving on to how this actually happens, you will need to choose a starter Pokemon that has 19 HP. And the only starter Pokemon that can have this low of HP is Chimchar, so he will be our sacrifice. And then, along with that, Chimchar will need to have a defense stat of 9 or lower, while the Starling needs to have an attack stat of 6 or higher. And then Damn. lastly, the Starling will need to deal 3 damage 5 times, and then on the 6th time, it will need a high roll and deal 4 damage, which will bypass the flea mechanic and KO the poor monkey. Mm. Say monkey. Monkey. Good. And that boom, there long. you go. You have officially lost to a Pokemon that is scripted to not win, which also did you the pleasure of softlocking your game. And to put more salt in the wound, I'm sure that most people <laughs> would have not saved the game at this point. So this will be a total reset on top of a softlock, which is just delicious. Not just that, but you also lose 40 Pokebucks. Next up, we have a true softlock at the very beginning of Pokemon Black and White. And when I say true, I mean that the softlock could occur from just regularly playing the game with practically no setup needed. So here's how it works, and I'm going to explain it like Spongebob to make it more fun. First, you want to choose Tepig as your starter and complete all the new game prerequisites. Once you're free from the professor, you want to spin around and spend all of your money on potions. Then stop in Akumala Town, listen to Guess's shenanigans, and then battle in and whoop his butt. Then you want to double take this house and receive the Pokeball from this guy. Then <laughs> defeat this trainer, this trainer, and this trainer, and then stop on this hill and grab these two items. Don't forget them. Then defeat Bianca and strike the city, grab this item, then bring it around town and talk to this guy and receive a Dusk Ball. And this guy is at this house for a Great Ball. Then pivot thrust huh, to the Dream okay. Yard and defeat this trainer and this trainer, and then receive a Pan Stage from this trainer, grab this item and this item back and strike the city, complete the quiz, battle Charon, defeat the gym, receive the HM Cut, release your Pan Stage, sell all your items, and find spend all of your money on mail and repeat a few times and then boom you are officially caught in a true soft fucking pokemon black and white oh my god that is way too much effort what the heck who would do that no legit who the heck would take the time out of the schedule to do that kind of soft lock because now you can't afford any Pokeballs and your starter Pokemon cannot learn the HM Cut, which is required to progress through the Dream Yard. So yeah, I would say this is one of the truest soft locks in Pokemon history, and it's quite hilarious. You said no setup, now that's Next all up, setup. Next up, we have a soft lock where Team Rocket actually wins for once, and here's how it goes. All you have to do in the Let's Go games is progress with the story up until you face Team Rocket at the Sylph Company, run to this room with these long tables, and then squeeze behind the Team Rocket grunt and get stuck. Then release all your Pokemon besides Pikachu and save the game. 
and boom, you are now softlocked. Forever being stuck behind this Team Rocket grunt, who probably is like an Ekans or something. Oh, How that's embarrassing. Edible. But as funny as this is, there is a niche way to escape, which I doubt most people would figure out. And that is by spawning a second player with another Joy-Con and pivoting right as they spin onto the ground. And by doing this, you can squeeze yourself out of this grunt's grasp and free yourself. Hmm. But it's such a specific setup that I doubt most people would figure this out until at least a few minutes or hours. So they would have been soft <laughs> for a little bit. Which makes the soft lock pretty funny. Yeah, that's a laugh. This next one is old but gold, and it's quite possibly the first true soft lock in Pokemon. And here's how it goes. In the Japanese versions of Pokemon Red and Green, all you have to do to soft lock these games is to simply evolve your starter Pokemon before delivering Oak's parcel. And that's it. Yeah, I'm not Wait, even what? kidding. When you evolve your starter Pokemon, the game assumes that you've already received your Pokedex. So Professor Oak has no reason to speak to you about it. And because you didn't receive your Pokedex, the Drunk Old Man of Viridian City will never move. So it becomes a fatal domino effect that soft locks your game. This drunk Damn. guy will never stop being drunk, Professor Oak gets Alzheimer's, and you are forever stuck with a useless parcel in an evolved starter Pokemon. This is your new reality. And I'm sure there are many players out there who thought this would be a fun idea to evolve the starter Pokemon very early in the game. I know I thought about it, but just didn't want to spend several hours grinding. Bad but for those who did spend several hours of grinding, they were severely punished, which just made the soft lock hilarious. Next up, we have a soft lock where you get stuck in Cerulean City, and this is how it goes. On your way to Cerulean City, you need to first catch a Geodude in Mount Moon. And after you catch a Geodude, you need to grind about 30 levels so that your Geodude can evolve and learn Defense Curl, Self Destruct, Harden, and Explosion. And once you lock in this moveset, you can then hop over okay, the- Okay, well hold on. Uh, I've been meaning to ask, what's the deal with having Self Destruct and Explosion? Are they not the same move? I mean... Seriously, people, what, what, uh, am I missing something here? Hmm? The one-way ledge go. outside of Mount Moon. And then once you reach Cerulean City, simply battle all of the trainers, release all of your Pokemon, sell all of your items, waste all of your money, and then finally save the game. And then, there you go. You are now soft-locked at Cerulean City with an exploding Graveler. Because when you walk north, you are challenged by your rival, and the only way to get past him is to defeat him in battle. But since your Graveler only knows damaging moves that faints it, it will be impossible for you to win. If you walk west, it will be impossible to catch any Pokemon since you wasted all of your money and have no Pokeballs. If you walk south, you will be blocked by a tree that will require the HM cut, but this HM is unobtainable until after you complete SSN. And finally, if you walk east inside the ransacked house, the policeman will not let you exit since you need to help Bill first. Oh my so yeah, God. you're pretty much screwed. And I don't think there's a way out of this. Even with the Gen 1 miss, I don't think it's possible, since self-destruct and explosions still fade the Pokemon even if they miss. So this is a pretty hilarious way to get softlocked in these games. I love it. What happened with you two? Oop, pause. And we're back. Next up, we have a software that occurs in the post-game of the Japanese versions of Pokemon Black and White 2. And here's how it works. If you return to Victory Road after becoming champion, there will be a Zoroark there that will lead you to the ruins of Inn's castle. And throughout the cave, the Zoroark will appear a few more times and guide you to where you need to go. But if you happen to decide midway through that you want to leave the castle and do something else, the Zoroark will take that personally. Because when you return <laughs> to the entrance of the cave where you first met with Zoroark, the Zoroark will appear there. But this time it won't move due to a fatal glitch that will cause it to be stuck there, making it a statue that will stand there forever. So instead of the oh player God. getting softlocked, the Zoroark gets softlocked, but inadvertently that softlocks the player. So the player is still softlocked, which is hilarious. <laughs> and even if you enter the cave, reset the game, do a few wild encounters, the Zoroark will still be there. The Zoroark will literally stand there for all eternity, and you can't do anything about it. This is your new reality. This Damn. grassy area, ends little Disneyland castle, and the cave. And the scary part about this is that Game Freak fixed this glitch for the international release of the games. But for some reason, there are some copies of the English White 2 floating around out there that still have this glitch present. So my advice is, huh. don't try this, because it will ruin your save if you happen to have one of these cursed White 2 cartridges. Why would anyone want that? Alright, here's a quick and easy one. In Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you can get softlocked at the Snowboy City Gym. And all you have to do is carefully move diagonally with solving the snowball puzzle. And if you do it just right, you will get stuck on the bottom of the gym with the other snowballs, becoming a snowball yourself. And of course, if you release all your Pokemon oh, and then save the game, you are officially stuck. Because you can't teleport, you can't fly, you can't dig, you can't trade, you can't do anything. This is your new reality of being a snowball for this gym. And the reason the soft lock is possible is because in the original games, the player wasn't meant to move diagonally. And since these remakes are extremely fateful, possibly too fateful, this soft lock becomes possible with this added movement, which is just hilarious. Okay, I've said hilarious too many times. Wait, 
It happens, man. Which is very funny. Hysterical. Uproarious. I've never heard of that word. Uproarious. Characterized by provoking loud noise or uproar. Yeah, huh. that is that. Yeah, I mean, okay. Now this one is a theoretical soft fall that takes place in Pokemon Go. That's a it would cost you several thousand dollars. To put it simply, it may be possible to get soft fogged by maxing out your inventory space and filling it with only incubators. And this would require 6,250 bag space and then having an extra incubator over the max limit. And after you drop around $5,000 buying all the incubators and bag space, you would technically be put in a catch-22 situation, where you have the incubators to hash eggs, but you don't have the space to receive eggs, putting you in some kind of soft lock. And I could be wrong, but I believe even if you do a raid with the free daily raid pass, you still wouldn't be able to receive items, since you can't spin the circle thingy with max items. But I don't know, I don't play Pokemon Go that often, so there's probably an escape somewhere. Let me know in the comments if you figured this one out. Uh, sell the incubators or just throw them away? You have the trash can icon you can use. Next up, we have a really simple sofa that also takes place in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but this time in Vilestone City. And literally all you have to do is sprint right in front of the Stunky as it walks what upwards. The? And if you do it right, you will be shoved through these two NPCs and imprisoned in this small gap. That probably smells like farts because these two people have been standing here since like 2006. And for this to be an actual soft vlog, you would have to be incredibly unlucky because you would need to have autosave on, enough badges to where the underground doesn't spawn any Abras or Rolts with teleport, and have oh. no Pokemon that can learn fly. And if you check all these boxes, then I guess you're permanently soft locked. And I say I guess because this soft lock needs more testing because it wouldn't surprise me if there's a niche way to escape, like in the Let's Go games. So let me know in the comments if you figure out a breakthrough to escape this soft lock. <laughs> peek a spr peek a spray, peek a spray, yellow. Oh my god, man. Next, we have another quick soft lock in the Japanese versions of Diamond and Pearl. And dang, I didn't realize how broken these games were. All you need to do to perform this soft lock is bring a Pokemon that will surf to the Pokemon League, into the room, and then start surfing on the door. Yeah, the you heard me right. For some weird reason, the doors at the Elite Four were surfable in the Japanese versions, which inadvertently what gave the player the? access to the void, and essentially allowed them to walk anywhere in the game. So, with this setup, the possibilities were endless for softlocking yourself. You could softlock yourself in the daycare garden, oh my this God. building, the statue, or even in this lava. <laughs> Literally wherever you wanted, you could softlock yourself as long as you can't move. Which makes oh this softlock pretty uproarious. See what I did there? And finally, for the final softlock, for this final softlock video that I'll probably ever do, unless a new softlock comes up and it's worthy of a softlock video, we eh. have this guy in Pewter City. Literally just talk to him on his right side and the game will freak out and freeze you. Ultimately soft fucking you until you reset the game. That's it. Whoa. Okay, bye. Hey, and if you enjoyed this video, I also have another- Well, that was kind of crazy. Oh, uh, well, damn. I mean, a lot of those you actually have to force onto yourself. They're not just random or coincidental. <laughs> well, folks, that's what we're going in today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this. Yes, and a uh, link will be in the description. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.